This video contains spoilers on all things Twin Peaks, so viewers please be warned. The spoilers are about to begin. The only reason I haven't busted him is I was hoping he would come around for you. Perhaps I should spend uh, a few minutes with Bobby alone. This is supposed to be family counseling. I don't think that's gonna happen. Benedict, it's gonna happen. I know it will. He's good inside. He goes out every day looking for work. This resume is one of the worst written I've ever seen. Bobby, when your father told me this, you were a very long way from where you are today. If they're coming down from Canada in our area, I would have seen them. I got every trail covered. Every known trail. Right. The main thing that most surprised me about Twin Peaks Season 3 was that Major Garland Briggs played such an integral part in the story. This, of course, was a very pleasant and welcome surprise. From the moment we first saw his gigantic floating head in the realm of non-existence, I was overjoyed. Then we have the entire mystery with Ruth Davenport, the secret message he left behind with his wife which led our team of heroes to Jack Rabbit's palace, and then the ending itself, where Major Briggs appeared to be directly involved in the plot to destroy Bob. And indeed, we also learned Briggs was involved in some secret plan with Cole and Coop regarding the entity known as Jow Day, or Judy. All of these scenes that featured the presence of Major Briggs exuded an eerie, almost unsettling vibe. The emotionless floating head telling Cooper Blue Rose. The headless remains along with the mystery surrounding his fingerprints and the ring to Janie E. The terrifying description of the Major's demise from a visibly shaken Bill Hastings. And the stoic demeanor when he apparently played a pivotal role in setting the trap for Bob and Mr. C. That unsettling vibe was omnipresent throughout all of these scenes. That unsettling vibe also extended to both his wife, Betty, and his son, Bobby. There was a certain element of sadness when it came to the entire Briggs family. Your father never lost faith in you. Bobby is one character we can now definitively say has grown and evolved tremendously between Twin Peaks seasons 2 and 3. Bobby's defining moments certainly happened in between. We receive evidence that Bobby has indeed grown into the man his father once envisioned. But at what cost? Does Bobby seem especially happy? Does Bobby appear fulfilled? In the original run, Bobby was a punk who was always a bit of a scumbag who had broken his fair share of laws. When we first see him in Season 3, we have reason to be suspicious of Bobby and we then witness a great display of sadness when he sees Laura's photo. The emotional breakdown is symbolic of the type of sadness that seemingly consumes Bobby's entire existence, especially concerning his ex-wife Shelley and his daughter Becky. We only have one scene where these three characters are together, but in their very brief shared screen time, along with various other clues and hints scattered throughout Season 3, we can reasonably make a lot of assumptions here. For starters, we know that Becky is married to a cheating drug addict, and we know that Becky herself is no stranger to partaking. We know they are having financial struggles, and they are constantly borrowing money from Shelley. Based on the disapproving eye of Norma, we can also assume that, Despite constantly helping her daughter as best she can, Shelley isn't exactly in a good place financially either. Additionally, Becky and Steven have problems that go beyond drugs and finances, including a dishonest foundation and evidence of domestic abuse. Their marriage is a mess, and both of them have shown a tendency to act recklessly. Shelley is Bobby's ex-wife, but she has clearly moved on. Shelly is the same old Shelly who was always attracted to the bad boy. First Leo, then young punk Bobby, now a big-time drug dealer in the mysterious Red. We don't know a whole lot about Red, but we know enough. He's bad news, and Shelly finds him irresistible. Absolutely irresistible. 
Red nearly shows his face, and Shelly is running away as fast as she can from the would-be touching family reunion. She's out of there, and Bobby is saddened by this. Whether this is an outward sign of jealousy, or just a matter of concern knowing Shelly is with a low-life scumbag, Bobby clearly doesn't like this, and Becky sympathizes, perhaps even feeling the same. Bobby appears to both enjoy and excel at his job. We can also reasonably assume that he has a genuine bond with his colleagues Sheriff Truman and also his fellow Deputy Andy and Chief Deputy Hawk. But one thing strangely missing from Bobby's life is a significant other. In the original run, Bobby was always a bit of a player. He was dating Laura Palmer. He was sneaking around behind Laura's and Leo's backs with Shelley. And at one point, he even rolled the dice and gave it his best shot with Audrey. Simply put, Bobby was once a total punk who exuded sexual energy. The babes loved him. But now, no one's special in Bobby's life based on what we saw in season three. Suggesting that, while Shelly may have moved on, Bobby hasn't. So when Shelly runs off towards Red like a smitten schoolgirl, I think it's both jealousy and concern from Bobby. We can also safely assume that Bobby isn't very involved in Becky's life. His role in law enforcement helped her when she went into her jealous fit of rage. And beyond that, Bobby awkwardly asked if Stephen hit her, suggesting he really has no idea what's really going on in his daughter's life. Becky doesn't seem to hit Bobby up for money the same way she does Shelly. And Bobby's tone when he offers to pay for Becky's incident, it just feels like he isn't very involved in her life. Where Bobby excelled in Season 3 was the leadership role he took in the quest to Jack Rabbit's palace. It was Bobby's knowledge and experience that helped crack the Major's secret codes, including the literal cracking of the message itself. Indeed, it was young Bobby who named it Jack Rabbit's palace. And doesn't Jack Rabbit's palace look almost exactly like the Giant's castle, where it is suggested the Major himself resides? These sequences where Bobby is connected to the past through his father, including the visit to his mother, these were the only times in season three where Bobby seemed to exhibit any type of genuine joy. On a personal note, these scenes were easily relatable for me, reminding me of the type of joy I often experience with fond memories spending time with my late father. In a very real sense, these scenes provided me with a deeper connection to both Bobby and the Major. While Bobby takes the lead in cracking the message and showing the way to Jack Rabbit's palace, his leadership role ends there. Interestingly, it is neither Bobby nor Hawk who is chosen by the fireman. It's Andy, the one who had a cheese and cheese sandwich, and the one who remembered they needed to put soil in their pockets. I'm not sure if the cheese and cheese sandwich and the soil reminder had anything to do with the fireman's selection of Andy, but that's very interesting. Turkey and cheese, ham and cheese, roast beef and cheese, and just cheese. And we have to put some soil in our pockets. Who ordered just cheese? I did it. Betty is another one where you could detect a certain element of sadness and loneliness, although perhaps that can best be explained by the nature of the scene itself. She also seems touched and proud that Bobby has supposedly grown into the man that the Major envisioned. What I'm left wondering here is if Betty wasn't the Clark Kent of Twin Peaks. In the original run, Betty always seemed a little clueless and aloof and in the dark regarding her husband's dealings. But after season three, I'm not so sure. While I'm not suggesting the Major revealed any classified secrets to Betty, I do believe she had a deeper understanding of his duties than we were originally led to believe. I'm also left wondering that since the Major's fingerprints were showing up all over the place in the years following his presumed death, is it possible he ever reached out to his beloved Betty? This brings us back to Major Briggs. In Season 2, we learn that Briggs had a connection with the log lady. She was the one who told Briggs to deliver the message to Cooper. Briggs was also the one who escorted the old waiter to the roadhouse, the man normally associated with the giant. This was just before Leland was arrested for Laura's murder. 
Later on, Briggs was also the first person to mention the White Lodge to Cooper before he suddenly disappeared. Briggs returned two days after his disappearance, wearing what appeared to be an old pilot uniform, and he had markings behind his ear. Does this mean Briggs was already time-hopping around back then? And if so, which version of Briggs? The Major then proceeded to explain his involvement with Project Blue Book and also his belief that he was taken to the White Lodge. Briggs was once again connected with the Log Lady where they had matching markings. Are you familiar with Project Blue Book? Yes, sir, I am. The, the duck was, uh, have uh, many names for it, but chief among them <coughs> is, the, uh, is the Black Lodge. We are searching for a place called the White Lodge. Cooper was the last person to see my father alive. Is this meant for the soul? My soul? Major Briggs shared with me and Cooper his discovery of an entity. In season three, even without Mark Frost's books, the evidence strongly suggests that Briggs was being coerced for information by Mr. C. At some point, Briggs must have eventually realized that he was not dealing with the Cooper he once knew, leading us down the path that led to Briggs' hibernation in the zone and ultimately his direct involvement in neutralizing Mr. C and Bob alongside the fireman. Which makes you wonder how close were the fireman and Major Briggs. The scene where Briggs escorts the waiter to the roadhouse. That seems to suggest that Briggs and the giant may have had numerous encounters. Not unlike Cooper himself. The fact that Major Briggs had the ring inside his stomach from Dougie to Janie E. That implies that Briggs was aware of Mr. C's efforts to cheat his way out of returning to the Black Lodge. Meaning, we know Briggs must have emerged from hibernation around the time the Dougie Tulpa first surfaced. And Briggs apparently also had the coordinates that Mr. C wanted, which brings us back to this. Major Briggs, Cooper, and I put together a plan that could lead us to Judy. The big question is, when did that meeting between Cooper, Cole, and Briggs take place? The answer here is important and has many implications. Did this meeting happen before Cooper was divided inside the Black Lodge? Or could this meeting have taken place when Mr. C was already on the scene? Furthermore, what's the connection here? Now the last thing Cooper told me... Two our spirits are stolen. I understand. I'm trying to kill two birds with one stone. The last time we saw Gordon Cole in Season 2 was when he was sharing a tender moment with Shelley. Cole said he was leaving town after that. Could the meeting have happened before he left? And if that's when it happened, and Cooper already had the two birds with one stone plan, does that mean that Cooper had already spoken with the fireman? Or in actuality, could it be that the idea was first proposed by Briggs, who had already been informed by the fireman himself? Holy shit. I mean, I know we've dove deep down the bunny hole here, but I think this makes a lot of sense based on the available evidence. I don't know if the Giant's Castle represents a part of the White Lodge. I don't know if Major Briggs was ever actually in the White Lodge, or if he was maybe mistaken. And I'm not even sure if the Fireman and the Giant are one and the same, but I had always assumed there was some significant connection between the Giant and the Fireman, even if they aren't one and the same. Which really makes me inclined to believe that the Fireman and Briggs were probably more closely connected than Cooper and him ever were. At least that's the impression I get, which would explain Cooper obtaining the information about two birds with one stone from Briggs before being later reminded by the fireman. After all, Cole does say it was the Major who identified this Judy entity. If the meeting happened around the time that Cole was kissing Shelley, that was the same episode where Briggs was already helping Cooper and Andy with regards to the Owl Cave stuff and Wyndham Earl's involvement in Project Blue Book. So that seems like a strong candidate for when that meeting may have happened. 
The alternative would be that Cole returned to Twin Peaks after Mr. C emerged from the Black Lodge, and that the meeting instead happened with Mr. C likely trying to exploit Cole and Briggs for his advantage. My son was standing there. He was happy and carefree. Somehow he knew that it would all turn out well. He saw this life for you. Clearly living a life of deep harmony and joy. What do you fear most in the world? The possibility that love is not enough. At the end of the day, if Briggs envisioned a brighter future for his son, and if Bobby is now the living embodiment of that vision, then the Major's worst fear had merit. Bobby is undoubtedly grown into a better person than he was during the original run. But again, at what cost? He appears to have a loving bond with his mother. He seems to enjoy his job. And he seems to have friends on the job, even if he's often excluded from the inner circles. Bobby's marriage with Shelley ended in failure. Shelley has moved on, and as far as we know, Bobby has no one special in his life and he does not seem especially involved in his daughter's life, even though you get the impression he would very much like that. Bobby's life feels like one that is sad, lonely, and unfulfilled. We never got to see Bobby's defining moment, and maybe Bobby's time for fulfillment is still on the horizon. The bright side here is that Bobby seems to be on a righteous path, exactly as the Major had foreseen. So maybe he will one day find that special someone, although I'm not certain that that's even what he really wants. I think what he really wants is what he had right in front of him at the Double R, a loving relationship with his ex-wife Shelly and his daughter Becky. But sadly, for Bobby, on this matter, love is not enough. If you're looking for a cool place to connect with fellow Twin Peaks fans, check out the Facebook group Between Two Worlds. Some damn fine people over there, and some damn good Twin Peaks discussions. Needless to say, I am now and always will be itching for more Twin Peaks. But not even necessarily more Twin Peaks. If there is any truth that Lynch is working on a new Netflix series with both Naomi Watts and Laura Dern, well, that sounds damn fine to me. So it's probably more accurate to say that I am itching for more material from David Lynch in a filmmaking capacity, but I am itching for more Twin Peaks too. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed and have a wonderful night. <laughs> well, the possibility that Love is not enough. See you later. Same place. <laughs>